All right, today I want to clean up this uh, old Proto. It's a 1332 uh, ball peen hammer. It's like, uh, I don't know, something like 30 ounces. And uh, it's a little greasy. It's got some, got some damage here. Looks like it's been beat pretty good. Had a hard life, got some chips on it. I'll probably, uh, probably file that smooth. And the head is, the eye is a little damaged. Might have to work on that a little bit. But uh, it's kind of grimy, so first I'm going to degrease it and then give it a little uh, bath and some Evapo Rest to clean it up. So I've got some simple green and uh, I'll soak that. Get that nice and clean. Okay. So I've got a little uh, small coffee can here. I'm just going to put the hammerhead in that. And I've got some Evaporust. I'll just pour enough in here to cover that. Ooh, perfect size. Alright, so the hammerhead has been soaking in here for about 10 hours and it's looking pretty good. I'm going to go take it over to the sink and give it a rinse and a little scrub. I've got a, um, a wire scrub brush so I'll see if I can loosen up some of this staining and we'll be right back. Alright, I don't know if you guys can see that now that it's And cleaned. It says Proto 1332 USA. It's got some some rust on it. Looks like some scale. Maybe it was paint at one point. I'm not sure. But uh, I've got this stainless steel brush. We'll see what happens. Yep, comes right off. It's looking pretty good. Now, that it, uh, this will like flash rust now that it's been cleaned. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go at it with a brush a little bit more and then I'm going to oil it uh, with some WD-40 just to keep it from flash rusting until I can figure out uh, what I'm going to do next. You can kind of see where it says Proto 1332 and you can also see better some of the damage here. It's pretty... Uh, mushroom down the end there on the face and it's got some chips out of it and the eye hole has got some uh, some steel or iron I guess um, that's kind of sharp and that'll make putting a handle on it difficult and this is the top and it's deformed in here uh, quite a bit so I think uh, I'll have to do some filing on the inside of the eye here in order to get the uh, the handle to come up through All right, here we go. I'm gonna put the uh, put the hammerhead in my Colombian vise here, and I'm gonna do a little filing. I'm gonna clean up this uh, mushrooming that's happening on the face, and uh, I've got a uh, Nicholson Mill Bastard file with my handy dandy golf ball file handle. I just drilled some holes in it. I did make a video about this. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, uh, check out my channel and watch that video. All I want to do here is just clean this edge up. I'm not trying to remove any more than I have to. This might take a minute. I'll come back when I'm done. Alright, so I fin finished up cleaning up the, uh, the face. Now I'm going to work on the eye a little bit. Um, I've got a small half round file. And I'm going to use my golf ball handle again. And I'm going to work 
stick it in here. Just trying to clean up the eye so it's easier to put a handle in there. I don't know if you got, you'll be able to see that, but there's a little bit of a spot right here that I had to smooth down and some more right here. And uh, here you can see that I cleaned up that mushroom on the bottom of the face there. And now I'm gonna work on the top of the eye. It's mushroomed so it's pushed down in right here and here as well. So again, I'm just gonna use that half round file and kind of clean that up so I can get the head of the uh, the handle in there. And uh, we'll go from there. Oh yeah? What? Really? I'm just using the tip of my finger to feel the inside of the eye there to see, to make sure that the the hole is straight and not curved in at the top like it was. Alright, I think you guys get the point. I'm gonna keep going and uh, I'll catch up with you once I'm all done. Alright folks, I've uh, taken the files to all the obvious signs of abuse and kind of cleaned it up. Uh, you can see the shiny spots are where I've filed. So the eye is now uh, straight pretty much all the way through. It's, uh, it's a lot nicer looking now. And all that's left to do on this is oil it um, and then uh, we can start working on fitting the handle. Okay, today is tomorrow, and uh, I've got the uh, the proto hammerhead all cleaned up. I'm happy with that. I oiled it last night, so it didn't get all rusty. And now it's time to start working on a handle for it. Um, this is just a Link uh, brand, I believe, hickory handle made in the USA. Um, I'm gonna give it a quick sand. I've got some sandpaper here. Usually they uh, put some kind of like polyurethane or acrylic finish on these um, and it's not it's not the nicest finish on it it's it's a bit rough they didn't really do a very fine sanding job on it so I'm gonna start with some uh, some 150 grit and go to 220 and probably call it good there but I want to get that um, whatever finish they have on there off and then sand it so it's nice and smooth uh, consistently I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but you can tell it's got some kind of uh, acrylic or polyurethane finish on it because it, it clogs the sandpaper um, pretty quickly. So. All right, now I'm gonna go up to the 220. And that should be plenty. Whew. 
Yeah, that's a lot nicer already. I, they probably did like, I don't know, a hundred grit finish on it. Um, just enough to call it good and then they, they seal it up and, and send them out. So this is, this is plenty. And um, from here it's uh, a matter of fitting the, the hammerhead, or the handle I should say, to the hammerhead. But I want to make sure that I have a good fit before I put the the wedges that it came with, that the handle came with. So I've got a wood wedge that will go um, in that slot there. And then it came with a steel wedge uh, that will go perpendicular. It'll go in perpendicular to that, uh, the wooden wedge. So it should push out in both directions, out towards uh, on the cheeks and towards the the face. So you can see a couple wraps with the uh, homemade mallet. Shove that up there nicely. And I don't know if you guys can see how my light is. I've got a nice tight fit at the bottom of the eye. And the top of the handles poking out sufficiently there. So I don't think I'm going to have to do any um, shaping of the handle, which is nice. Uh, I've got another hammer project that I'm going to be working on soon. And let me grab that. This is a, a bigger. Um, this is a Champion Deermont Tool Co. Uh, tool Company. Uh, ball peen hammer. So this is a Proto 30... 32 ounce. You can see this is bigger. This is probably closer to 40 ounces, maybe three pounds. Um, and the only handle I could find that would fit it is is a 16 inch claw hammer handle and it has a square or a rectangular profile. If I can get the camera to focus here. It's got a rectangular profile. So I'm gonna have to shape that to fit the oval eye hole. So that'll be in another video. Stay tuned for that. Alright, so I've had a couple minutes to think about how I want to finish the handle. I've seen a few uh, a few folks will take a like a propane torch to a wood handle and it'll char the handle a little bit. And I've always thought that that looked really neat and I've always wanted to try it. And I decided I'm going to give it a shot. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then I think typically after you char it, you brush any um, excessively charred sections where you maybe stayed on it a little too long with the heat um, with a wire brush just to loosen any like flaky charred stuff. And then it's typically oiled after that. So I think that's my plan. So I've got some boiled linseed oil that I'll put on after I char it. So let's, uh, let's give that a shot. Although... I suppose I should probably do that outside. All right, well, we made it out to the garage and I've I got I took the head off, so I've got it someplace I can hold on to it without freezing my hands. It's still pretty chilly out here. And I got my propane torch and well, I guess here goes nothing. That's looking pretty good. You guys probably can't see very well. Um, ooh, that's warm. Imagine that. I'll uh, I'll keep going and then I'll try to regroup when we get inside again and I've got better light and I can get a better focus. So all I'm doing is I'm just slowly sweeping the flame across, trying not to get too close because I, I don't want it to be black. I want it to have some nice contrast. All right. You guys might be able to see here. I wonder if I can if I stand over here if the light's any better. Probably not. Anyways, it looks better in person than it does on the camera right now. Yeah, 
that's warm. Ouch. Ooh, yep, that's hot. Gloves might have been a good idea here. Yeah, I would recommend gloves. All right. Again, I'm sure the lighting is not great. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit better. There we go. So you can kind of see, you got some nice contrast. It really makes the grain uh, of the handle really stand out and uh, I may so there are some spots that are a little darker than I want kind of like right in here it's a little dark I'll probably hit that um, with some sandpaper real light just to see if I can lighten it up and worst case scenario if I'm not happy with it I can do a lot of sanding and sand it all back to like a natural color and start over again It's nice and warm on my cold hands. Oh, it's nice. It's like putting on a pair of jeans right out of the dryer. Mmm. It looks pretty nice. I'm happy with that. There's a couple of dark spots where I lingered too long with the flame, like right here. And uh, let's see. Down here. Just a little bit. So I've got some 400 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna see if I can just just very lightly sand those dark spots and remove some of the char and see if I can get a more consistent look. <sighs> Maybe not. Believe it or not, this handle smells really good because it's hickory and I've charred it. So it kind of smells like smoked hickory, almost like, like beef jerky or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just hungry. Yeah, that definitely feels way better than just the 220 grit. I'm going to get a paper towel and try to wipe some of this dust off. These are those blue um, Scots like shop towels. Uh, I love these things because they're way more uh, durable than like your craptastic like Walmart paper towels. These don't last anywhere near as long. So Scots um, you know, sponsor me? Shoot me an email. We'll talk about it. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, I've got a, I've got a couple of dark spots right there. Um, I'm okay with that because I don't, I could go over the whole thing again with the torch to try to get the rest of it as dark as the darkest spot so it looks more uniform. But I actually like the the amount of darkness that I've got here, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna let it go. And there we go. What I'm going to do, uh, I guess it's probably easier to cut this off with the hammer head not on it. So I've got a pencil and I'm just going to mark around the top of the hammer where, where the, the handle sticks through the eye. And then I'll, I'll take the handle off the head and I'll try to cut that off. That way it's not sticking out.
fancy. Oh yeah, that's sharp. Okay, this will be the last time, I think, hopefully, that you'll see me beat this thing with a hammer. Let's hang this upside down. Pow on. Alright. There we go. So now I'll uh, I'll grab my wedge here. So the handle came with this uh, wood wedge and a metal wedge. And what I got to do is cut this so that way it fits the handle or the eye because it's wider than that. So I'll just mark that with a pencil. I should be able to just cut it with a razor blade. Without severing any fingers, hopefully. Look at that. Snapped right off. Whoa. I'll cut that out. All right, so now I just gotta get that wedge in that slot. And I'll use my, my little lakeside tool, um, ball peen hammer. I don't know, this is probably like eight ounces. I'm not sure. Now I gotta get this thing in there. So this is that uh, 150 sandpaper, 150 grit. And I'm just gonna clean up the, the rough parts of the uh, handle that's poking through the top. All right, boiled linseed oil. Um, you gotta be careful with this stuff. Uh, it even says right on the back of the can, use extreme caution. Uh, this stuff will actually spontaneously combust. So like when you're done, you, it, it even recommends like rinsing your rags thoroughly with water and detergent. Um, so like don't oil a bunch of things with the boiled linseed oil and then throw all the rags in a container because uh, you could have a fire. Uh, there's a guy who's got a YouTube channel, um, his name is, I think it's Jason, and his channel is Fireball Tool. He actually did a YouTube video where he tested that to see if, you know, if it would really happen. It's an interesting video, you should go check it out. Put a nice coat of that on there. It shines right up. Now this wood's pretty dry, so it'll it'll probably soak that right up. So I think I'll probably apply three coats of this. So I'll put this coat on and I'll leave it here for a little while. And I'll come back and do another coat and then let that sit and then come back and do a third and final coat. Um, and after three coats, we'll see how it looks. So I won't show you all of that because, I mean, who really wants to watch me put three coats of oil on a stick? There's probably somebody out there and I'm sorry, this video is not for you.
So I'll leave that just like that and come back in, I don't know, an hour or so and do it again. Of course now my hands are all oily and it's not my camera so I probably should go wash my hands before I turn it off. All right, folks, there it is, finished project. Of course, it's out of focus for you, but it looks beautiful to me. Um, it's got a nice charred hickory handle with a boiled linseed oil finish on it. It's nice and smooth. We did some sanding, and uh, what once was a uh, an abused hammerhead is now a useful tool. And if you stuck around this long, thanks for watching. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm just starting my... Uh, time here on YouTube and I have a whole list of other projects I'd like to undertake and I'll be sharing them on YouTube. So if you like this one, uh, come back again and see what I've got going on. Thanks.